very, very interesting along the lines of why Manchester United's injuries are happening and what's going on at Carrington. I want to get into that and go into detail on that on tonight's show. We're going to talk about Eric Ten Hag and what he's been saying in his press conference. More candidates thrown in the hat for the managerial role at Manchester United. Should Eric Ten Hag fail from now until the end of the season? It's not had a good start. There's plenty to talk about. Hello, everyone. I'm back. It is the evening show. This is for every United TV. I'm Adam. Make sure that you're getting your likes, first of all, in on the chat. And obviously, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you tune in to the first time. Get in the comment section, guys. Talk to me. Have you watched Ten Hag's press conference? What do you think? Do you think he was the usual Ten Hag, upbeat, uh, joking, aren't you? Self, uh, he usually is in these press conferences. Uh, is it his fault what's going on right now? We're going to get into a bit more on the injury side of things. Uh, and obviously, we're going to talk about what else has been going on with Manchester United today. There's been some transfer speculation. There's been some updates on players that are actually coming back to injury as well, which is good news, which is good news and what we actually need. We do need some little bit, uh, something a bit more positive going on, especially after yesterday. I was down and out last night, like literally, I like, could not believe the news about uh, Lissandro Martinez. I'm going to start with that because I've been told, uh, and this source has come from the club, as you might guess from the way it's been uh, said. Uh, so just give me one second while I just go into it. And what was said to me uh, on this was, uh, <clears throat> I'll say this to you, bro, uh, and it is... Uh, and this is a bit of information I was not going to share or make public. With Martinez, he strayed uh, from the rehab. This is what's being said. He strayed from the rehab program thinking he knows best. Now look, Lindelof a month is very optimistic and Evans is a big uh, is a big uh, risk uh, as Harry Maguire with their issues. So the gaffer has to juggle risk versus benefits, taking into account if the player has done all they can uh, to mitigate said risk. I uh, hope this gives a bit more insight, mate. Uh, I asked him a couple of questions regarding player power and players not doing as they're told at the football club. He said he just never listens to the medical staff, does never listen to the medical staff and their team. They never wanted him to travel to Argentina to meet up with the squad. It's unfair the medical team getting this put on them. Right, OK, so that clearly has come from the club side of things and their stance on it. I think what's happened here is everyone has gone in, including myself last night on the medical team. They're still not getting away with it. I mean, it's it's a joke how many injuries Manchester United have actually had this season. It really is. Like, over 55 injuries... It's a farce. I don't want to go too far into that. I covered it all last night. I don't want to bore everyone with the same stuff again. But then going into Ten Hag's press conference today, Ten Hag comes out and makes the comment, it's not only us that's dealing with this. You cannot stop this. If it's not only you having to deal with this, Eric, then why are we so bad on the pitch? If everyone else is dealing with the same issues, then why are we so bad? Now, I understand some have had it worse than others. That is fair and a fair comment. I would say us... Alongside Newcastle, maybe Liverpool at times this season, not having a team, battling through game after game after game. I feel like Arsenal and City have probably got away with it a little bit. But when you look at Manchester City, Haaland, good spell out. De Bruyne, a massive chunk of the season out. A few months there for Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, probably longer injury than a lot of what Manchester United players have had. But he's come back and has been playing perfectly. Like, no issues, no repercussions. Same with Haaland. Why can't our medical team say whether one player needs a little bit more time, a little bit less time on the pitch when they first come back? How come we are not programmed to make our players or give our players the best chance possible is what I want to say with that. Because like Tenag said, like it's unheard of. It's hard to deal with. He also said when it came to certain players, I don't know which player he was alluding to because I've been out filming all day today, so I'm catching up with... Uh, what was actually being said by Eric Ten Hag. And the gist of it was like, look, there is a problem. We found out what the problem is and we're going to deal with it internally. There's that internal problem yet again and it will be dealt with. Well, it won't. You know it won't be dealt with because like the other internal matter, that wasn't dealt with either because we're not doing any better. Anything that's being dealt with internally... The fans there are just expected that to happen. So if you're asking the fans just to stay stum 
and nobody's going to know what's going on and you're not filling us in with any more detail and all we can judge is what happens on the pitch and that you have dealt with it and everyone is cohesive and working uh, well together and we're moving forward. That's not happening. It's not happening. So everyone is going to come back with even more criticism. Again, like Ten Hag, he's, I'm not expecting anything from press conferences. I'm not expecting him to fill me with confidence whenever he opens his mouth now. He's answering questions that are really awkward to answer. That he knows are coming and that he's probably sick and tired of answering. You've got to give him that. Like It is now a stage where... It just is going to keep happening and happening and happening. I don't. I'm not confident that any player is going to get through the rest of this season now without getting an injury. It's just the way it's gone with United. Like we waited so long for Martinez to come back, and now he's got another injury. Like Lindelof's been out, Maguire's been out, Varane has been out, Luke Shaw is out for God knows how long now. Obviously, we had Malasia. He has been out for a full season. You move into the midfield, you've got more problems there, like Mason Mount and all of that as well. So. In terms of judging how Ten Hag has handled today's press conference, I really don't think that he could have answered anything any differently. Uh, he goes on and on and on. It's, it's an excuse game. It really is. Like He has got no more excuses. Like it, Where it is unfair to him, he still has enough players to compete in the games that he's failed in. So it's, it's like, yeah. Half the time, I feel like when United do get an injury or another injury comes around, everyone loses focus of what's actually happening. Like, we didn't have Martinez in that game against Brentford. He came on for the last, what, 15 minutes. So Martinez wasn't even a big player in that game for us. And we were still shit. So let's forget about that and let's forget about bringing that in. Lindelof, like, like seriously, is a player there that I'm not massively over-concerned that he's missing. Like, like all day long, he's, out of all the defenders we've got, I have him down as now, I would probably say fifth to sixth choice in that Manchester United team. That's where I've got Lindelof. So no big concerns there. I think it's just going to be used as an excuse again. Like it cannot, and you, we cannot allow this to happen and continue this way. It's not acceptable that managers are using injuries as excuses. We've got a good enough squad. And in the games that we've lost, look at the team that's been out on the pitch. That's all I'm asking you to do. So look at all the games United have been beaten in this season and tell me that that team isn't full of full international first team players. Like there are a few that you could argue, like maybe West Ham, when we played them in, in the league just before Christmas. I think that game is definitely when you could say, right, yeah, we're unlucky there. It's a tough game to go to. As Spurs found out last night and they dropped points. It's a tough game to go to and play at. Uh, and without your key, key players and your big name players, you're always going to struggle. So, yeah, I look at that and I go, that was probably one game. But look at the rest. Look at the lineup we had. And then you try and defend what Ten Hag is saying with these injuries right now. And you'll come on stock. You will. That's all I'm asking you to do. Our new member in the house is Bradley Hendricks. Welcome to the Members Club, my friend. Uh, that was gifted by Fred Craham. Thank you very much, Fred. Legend, absolute monster legend on the channel. Love that. And welcome again, Bradley, to the Members Club. If you do want to join and be a member, guys, and be part of the T4 watch-alongs, which are coming, and tomorrow night is another one. Don't forget to tune in for that. We are live from quarter to eight tomorrow night for the late kickoff, guys. So, uh, members... There is a video out there already in the member section for you guys to follow the instructions of. If you haven't already downloaded uh, TFO and logged in, then make sure you do that. Uh, and if you are uh, keen on being part of it, then you can always join the members. It is completely optional, guys. Like I've always said before, I don't want to push anyone to be in, uh, uh, a member and having to pay anything out. All contributions are more than welcome on the channel. But yeah, for them that have been uh, contributing a lot we are just piloting this new platform and it will be out for everyone anyway soon enough. Uh, Keelan, who's been a member for a month now at Mad Red 2. Thank you so much, mate. He has left a message. Hey, Adam, injuries are, are, are bound to happen. Uh, we need to have squad players, off players uh, who play uh, uh, like their lives depend on it. We don't have that yet. We haven't got a... We haven't got a first team, I don't think, at the moment. Never mind the squad. So when we talk about uh, not having a, a deep squad, when we talk about not having a decent squad depth, I, I still don't think 
we have managed to find our best team yet. It's like, who is Manchester United's best 11? Like that right now is a complete... That's a, that's a complete mind... Uh, I'm I don't want to swear. I did enough of that last night. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a complete, a complete mind F-bomb. Let's just say that. Because I don't think you can pick a front three, definitely. That is United's best from what's available. Don't think you can pick a best midfield. Although I would probably be more confident that people would find a best midfield out of what we've got. And defence, well, there you go. Like, it really is just... It's an impossible, it's an impossible task. Like, who is Man United's best eleven? And you're talking about adding squad players to that. It's complicated and more, I think, at Manchester United right now. It really is. And I just look at what we've got and what we've got available. And I just don't want to be one of these teams and one of these fan base that use it as an excuse. Like, no one is saying that Manchester United's teams that have lost them games have not been good enough to win them. Like. I said it before. Like, um, all we had to do was take points off what Brentford, Palace, Fulham, Bournemouth. No disrespect, all games that United squad and players playing in them games could have won, and we didn't. So yeah, let's forget about that, and let's just forget about what's happened to Martinez and Lindelof. Like we were going in to these games coming up, knowing that Martinez was only just coming back anyway. I've I've, I've made peace with what happened last night. And I've just given up on Martinez playing this season now, but I'm not going to use it. Uh, I'm not going to use it to defend Ten Hag. I'm just going to say, look, yeah, that's a player that you brought in, and we do miss him. We do, but you've got more than enough there in that team to get Manchester United in the Champions League and win the FA Cup. You have. You just need to get more out of them somehow. And then the argument comes in again straight against me, which says these players have given up and down tools, so no one's going to be able to get anything out of them. Well, in that case, then you change it up, don't you? You start making players sit out on the bench, like we've said. I said this morning earlier on, I said in the Bruno video, like, I'm gonna drop Bruno, I'm gonna drop Bruno for this game. I'd rather Bruno be playing fully fit against Liverpool. I think Manchester United have got enough to go at that Chelsea game. Like, if you've got a team that you want to just do a specific job, uh, then I think you can rest Bruno out. I don't think you need to play him. So I'm going to put Mason Mount in the position where Bruno Fernandes is. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to change up the front line and drop Rashford as well. I said this all in the video and you guys have been commenting on it as well. And I think it's fair to say that a lot of Manchester United fan base now want to see different faces. They want to see something new. They're sick to death of watching the same players completely fail for this football club. And that's what we've got to look at, I think. And I think that's how Ten Hag can show that he has got control again. It's it's not going to be easy dropping certain players. And yeah, if it backfires, then he looks like a bit of an idiot. But what has he got to lose, really? He has got absolutely nothing to lose. He might as well just go in and just change it up and just see what happens. There are players there that want to prove a point. There's an interesting uh, tweet that's gone out from uh, ESPN regarding Mason Mount. And now... Some fans had uh, forgotten that Mason Mount was even part of this team because we'd not seen him for so long. And apparently Mount t took that to heart, didn't like it that much. So United have made a big deal out of Mason Mount since being back in the team on social media and whatnot. Let's not get into United's social media because that's just a farce anyway, isn't it? And what they put out, they're an absolute joke. Uh, but Mason Mount, I think, is a player that's got a point to prove. He's fully fit now. You might as well utilise what you've got. I mean, Eric, it doesn't look like you've got much time left. It really doesn't. If anything, go out with a bang and start changing things up. Because right now, we're hearing more and more stories come out regarding other managers that have been linked with Manchester United's job, who United are looking at. And it's just a long, long list of issues that I don't think Tenag is going to be able to get over. If he manages to just knuckle down and get something out of the rest of this season with all of these injuries, then he's got a good case. But I just don't see it being strong enough for him right now. And I do believe the inevitable is going to happen. Like, I'm really, really worried about what is going to happen this weekend against Liverpool. I'm I'm bricking it. I really am. I really am. I just don't know if we can take another humbling at home. It's embarrassing enough already as it is. And it's going to be tough very tough. 
Uh, Henry Long in the chat says, Hi Adam, I listened to Ten Hag's press conference today and to be honest, I was not impressed at all in regards to injuries by not answering any question. Why is that, Adam? Because he's desperate, mate, and he's on his bike. Like He's, he's lashing out. I've said this before. He's literally showing exactly where managers, previous managers before, I said this over the weekend. I said, look, look what happened to Walla. His health deteriorated. Everything falls apart. And he is just falling apart right now. He's got no answer to anything, Ten Hag. And I think he is just a dead man walking. There's nothing we can do about it, sadly. Uh, and it doesn't look like he's going to change tact. He's going to go at it any other different way. If he doesn't, then he's going to get these awkward questions. If he keeps ignoring the questions, then the pressure will mount. And this is where the media start to turn on him. As soon as Ten Hag doesn't start... As soon as Ten Hag doesn't answer questions in a press conference or tries to avoid them, then you'll find all of these other stories coming about on what's happened and other things going wrong. Like, how Manchester United uh, let Martinez go, like, is ridiculous. Like, from what I have been told today, and how Martinez ignored the staff, like, players need punishing. Like, if they have made a plan and have told Martinez not to go to Argentina then he should not be going. Don't let him go. Like, who is in charge at Manchester United? That's the question you've got to ask here. Like, who is and who has the final say on things like this happening? Because if he's gone of his own accord, then he shouldn't even be getting anywhere near the team. I don't care how important he is and how much the fan base love him. If this is true, then it's even more worrying than what I was talking about last night and actually missing Martinez in the first place. If these players are deciding what they are doing when it comes to their recovery uh, and getting over injuries, then we've got absolutely no chance. Absolutely no chance. Uh, there is a poll going on right now, guys, uh, which says, who is to blame more for United's injuries? The manager, the fitness staff and coaches, the players themselves, or just football in general? There's just too much going on. They've got too much to do and too many games to play, is what that means. 12% have gone in on that. 11% on the players themselves. The manager gets 18% and the coaches and fitness staff take 59%. And I think this is why this story sort of being leaked out a little bit. Not put right out there, but leaked out. Again, there's that word leak. Uh, and it now looks like, I mean, if this is true, and I don't know why it wouldn't be and why these people wouldn't say it, would say it, I think they're defending themselves. But yeah, Martinez was told not to go to Argentina. But when a player knows he's not going to get punished, when a player knows there's going to be no repercussions for his actions, there's going to be uh, no accountability for any for any wrongdoing. It's like Rashford again. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I take responsibility. Uh, that's big enough, isn't it? Uh, do you know what I mean? I'm taking responsibility. Go on, yeah, look at me, big man. That's what it's about. Well, no one else is going to take responsibility for your stupid actions, are they? Well, again, I love Martinez. But I don't care. If he's not listening, then punish him. Like, oh, he's gone away. And you know what? He comes back and they're trying to defend themselves here, but they're their own worst enemy. So if he has gone away and he hasn't been given permission to do so, then why is he even coming on the pitch? Why is he even coming on the pitch against Brentford? Like, why is he in the squad? He's gone away. You don't know what he's been doing while he's over there. Yeah, you might get guarantees from the Argentinian uh, uh, authorities uh, and federation that he's not done anything. You don't know. No one knows what he's been doing. So let's just look at it this way. Like, he could have come back even worse. Like, and that's the problem we've got now at this football club. Uh, and I feel like it is a, a major, major problem uh, right now because... Uh, We've got players doing whatever they want. And this is while Ineos have actually taken charge as well. So it is a massive, massive worry. So uh, just to add things up a little bit, uh, I am going to bring our man Jay in on the stream tonight. He's in the house. Bear with me one minute. Uh, I'm just going to get uh, Jay hooked up uh, and in the room with us. Uh, so we can get his opinion on what is actually going on with Lissandro Martinez and everything else. Plenty of questions. And if you guys want to get involved, get in the live section right now and let me and Jay know what you're thinking and uh, what your major concerns are going forward. Jay, how are you, my friend? 
Alan Grieving, good to be here. Listen to your show, Driving Home. Thank so, you very much, mate. Ace and our club, it's, I said many years ago, we are like one of those Latin America ten novelas. Every day, there's some little foible to deal with. And now, I saw your show last night as well, the Martinez thing. Um, our contact sent me the same message. And uh, I was like, well, if that is true, the club literally then have no power over their players. Yeah. Um, if you tell an employee to follow a protocol, and again, it's obviously a rehab from injury, but you tell an employee, you've got to do X, Y, and Z in your job to achieve X goal, and the employee doesn't do it in the real world, in real business, well, then the employee is reprimanded. Now, we all love Martinez. Uh, we love what he brings to the team. Obviously, we've missed him as a player. He was uh, quite impactful um, in his cameo on Saturday. And just as you feel, okay, we might get Martinus back, at least live Liverpool, he goes off on his own tangent. <clears throat> and now we've lost him possibly for a season. So, you know, we're, we're very quick to blame club staff. And I was of your opinion last night. And now that we have this nugget of information, well then, does the club and the hierarchy and the manager have any control over the players and their actions? Or is it... What we felt for years, and I said many years ago, it is Cam Carrington. Is it mm. just a holiday camp for players on big wages? That's my question to everybody watching tonight. This is it. I think that's a question that's come up on a few different circumstances and different events over the last few years as well, Jay. I mean, you look at what uh, I think I was talking about it. I think it was yesterday regarding what Matic said regarding Jaden Sancho, how uh, they were allowing the players to actually build up this pot of fines to go out on the lash. In London, uh, you could look at uh, what Rashford did. You could look at uh, what Sancho did again in isolation this season. And now Martinez, you don't know what else is going on behind the scenes. And like we said, this little bit of information, I think, has just been, has come out really because the medical staff were sick of getting the brunt of all of the hate and everything else and the blame yesterday when the news broke regarding Martinez. Uh, and the players just do what they want. That is the biggest control. That is the biggest concern. Uh, and you can see it in the chat right now. It's like uh, people saying, uh, my major concern is how come we have such a, a clown in charge, says Boxing Straight Talk. This is it. So people will automatically, Jay, look at this and go, well, Eric Tanag has got no backbone like He's moaning and bemoaning, not answering questions in press conferences because he's getting fed up. But he is not holding anyone accountable in his squad. Everyone can just walk over him, it would seem. Yeah, Jaden Sancho's got the harsh treatment. But you can't treat one one way and then the rest another way. I think he's lost a little bit of control. And then all the melee that has been this season, I think it has just got to him in the end. And... Now we don't know who's coming or leading going. Uh, cheers for the 100 likes, guys. Thank you so much. Please keep liking the video. Let's get that up to 150. Uh, just around 500 in the room of us right now. Make sure you are hitting that subscribe button and do share the video as well. Uh, Jay, on uh, the carnage, which is now the rest of the season without Lissandro Martinez, it's Chelsea tomorrow night. Also, we've got some good news today in the press conference that Maguire is training, Varane is training, uh, and Johnny Evans is back in training. So... Uh, we are annoyed with what's happening with Martinez, but there can't be any excuse, any excuses still. We have got a good enough team there. Yeah, um, I'm not a man for a set of excuses anyway. Um, every team in pro sports gets, gets injuries. That's just part of um, you know pro sports. And Ten Hag, he can bemoan injuries all he wants in the, his press conferences, but that's just reality. Do you see um, other managers the morning injuries? No, just get on with the job. So we're left now with Maguire, Evans, and Varane. And the fitness levels of Varane and, and Maguire are tenuous, to say the least. So are we left with um, Varane plus uh, Cabawanda, that's the chap's name, to play against uh, Chelsea? And mark my words, Chelsea tomorrow night, they're going to rock up like Brazil 1970. They're going to fancy tomorrow evening. Um, what what we would have thought buoyed after the result against Liverpool, we thought, again, yeah, Chelsea, we'd get a 1-0 off them. Get Mark Morris tomorrow night. We're going to see Chelsea activate Brazil 70 settings. And we're in for one hell of a game to, on, on tomorrow night. No question, No questions asked.
I should be entertaining anyway, Jake. I'll say that. We should have a little bit of an entertaining game uh, with United and Chelsea in the way that they're both defending. No idea. It's like a crazy gun hole football for both clubs right now. So, if anything, let's hope that that is the case and we've got uh, something a little bit better to watch than what we did against Brentford the other night. Uh, it's like we cannot stop thinking about what's going down uh, this weekend as well. And it's, we should be concentrating solely on Chelsea, but I think in the back of every United fan's mind right now, we've obviously got the weekend on our minds and it's a little bit concerning. It really is. I'm going to come to the chat, guys, so get your comments in now. Uh, Carsten says, in Denmark, it's more and more implanted to make a survival tour. Players and staff together, Ineos might implement uh, as it's also used in cycling. True. I mean, Jay, do you know anything about that or that type of uh, uh, strategy in terms of bringing the team together, like a survival, a survival tour? Yeah, um, a team by a former Tour de France writer called Bianca Reese won Tour de France in 1997. So 1996, he was leading a team um, called CSC Tuscali in every off season, uh, Danish man, um, very stern upbringing. He brought his entire his team, his mechanics, masseuses, riders, supports, everybody had to go on a week-long survival camp. Because in Brian Reese's um, mind, he wanted to see who had each other's backs when the shit hit the fan in a race. And that's what he did. And every year, it was also a way as well of seeing would new recruits to the team, would they buy into his philosophy? And literally, it was all for one, one for all. You know, I know it's an old adage, but he knew after that training camp, okay, what makes riders tick and, and what riders are natural alphas and what riders am I going to prove with during the season that I got to manage it a little bit differently. So, yeah, it worked in a certain context. So now we have um, dropped, was it the, the Telegraph dropped the the um, story about Bradsford bringing all the, the players in for a little um, yeah. tet or tet. Now, David Bresford, um, he hasn't he hasn't done that simply as a cup of coffee with the lads to find out what they think. I don't really think Bresford cares what they think. It's it's a mind game. I hope he so. will have we he will have do, those players answer those questions analyzed to the nth degree. He's trying to see what makes these boys tick. That is what he's doing. And I saw I saw a lot a lot of people on, on X. Um, commenting oh what's he at what's he doing it's a mind game that's mm -hmm. all it is he's analyzing their responses and he is also analyzing their body language that's what Bradsford is doing plain and simple in my in my humble opinion could we put that under the bracket of sports science in a way and best in class at doing that sort of thing i mean it's sort of a let's just say sieving out the good from the bad like the good bits and then letting the bad bits go away but i think the big question that everyone would take from that then, Jay, is like, okay, so you've got everyone's opinion. You can tell what sort of person they are. How do we get rid of that person if he isn't fit for purpose? I think that's the next question in all of that, isn't it, Jay? Fact. And, and also in the article, and the article put this spin that Bradsford was telling the players the vision and plan for the club. I don't believe that bit for a second. I believe he was telling the players what they know they wanted to hear and he in his in his interview in Tunique, and i'm I, i've done it i'm not qualified for psychology i'm not i'm not but i read a lot of books of psychology and you want that person to ask you questions so if your player sister like like a nodding dog isn't asking asking you questions but your philosophy and what you're doing you're thinking hang on a second this is i've got a lazy player here lazy mind lazy body so they've been analyzed to the nth degree they just probably didn't realize it yeah that's, that's very true. Uh, 150 in the bag, guys, on the likes. Thank you so much. You might as well just knock that up to 200 if you want to get a like in. Download our Sofa Score app as well. Bottom right hand corner, guys. You're going to need that tomorrow with that Chelsea game because I'm going to be live on the watch along on T4 going over all the stats of all the players. I'm going to be scrutinizing everyone tomorrow. I want 100%. <laughs> Get on that QR code, scan that. If you can't scan the QR code, drop in the description below, guys, and click on the link. Sofa score, top link on the description, and download it for free. That's the big thing. It's free. Don't want anything from you at all. We're not asking for anything. It's the best football app out there. It's the fastest and rated one of the best out. So get onto that. Everything that's used with our links obviously helps the channel as well. If you want to get behind the channel, do something for free. 
Thank you very much. Jonathan in the chat says, we are like a small team that can muster a half-decent side with our best 11, but any injuries or suspensions and down the table we go. Louise, honestly, the state of Chelsea this season, if they beat us, the media and social media will be insane. Uh, that's the question I wanted to bring to you next, actually, Jay, on that. Like a bad result tomorrow going into that Liverpool game, this like will be... <sighs> I honestly, the way it's going, and we're going to talk about other managers in a minute that's been reported, but if he gets beat or humiliated against Chelsea and then loses to Liverpool, I personally think he's already done and they're just going to let him see out the season. But uh, this will be this will be too much to take for nearly all the fan base. And if you was on the fence, I think you'd be well and truly one side after this, Jay. Yeah, I think already there's a more than one nail in everything has coffin and should he lose two in a row against Chelsea a, a, a poor Chelsea side and a boy Liverpool side and in a, another local derby I think um he's pretty much sealed his, his own debt warrant there but look we never go into a game you me anybody watching in the live chat wishing you know they're going to lose anybody that watches a game wishing now they're going to lose. Well, sorry, lads, you're, you're co supporting their team. Mm -hmm. Look, we want United to win tomorrow night. We want, we want them to win on Sunday. The difference is our conference levels after Brentford have nosedived from what they were the previous week. And I think with this team, Adam, and just this whole season and the Ten Hag tenure, it has been this boom bust cycle. You know, we'll, 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 we'll scrape out three wins against mid level teams. Then we then we'll we'll get a draw against a team on on paper and a team we should beat, and we we'll lose, and then we play an Arsenal, a Man City, or Liverpool, and you know from some hail mary we we'll get a win, and then we'll lose three in a row. It's this boom bust cycle. There is no consistency, and that's my biggest problem with Ten Hag: the lack of consistency, and that shows where we are in the um, table right now. You know, we are now teetering on the brink of not even getting Europa League football. Imagine that. A month ago, Adam, we we were discussing um, the running. I think when we discussed originally, there was 14 games left. And I said, right, Adam, we got 14 cup finals, mate. You know, we get 30 points or whatever <laughs> points I picked. And I was really, you know, Adam and, and Boy and yeah, we always cup finals. Bloody hell. Because Brentford, Brentford last weekend, it was like the lads were doing a preseason friendly. Yeah, honestly, it was. Mate. It was like defense against attack. It was like a drill. Never mind a friendly. It was a training yeah. bleeding drill. It was that embarrassing. But uh, two managers I want to bring into the attention of everyone in the chat and obviously you, Jay. I'm going to come to you on this. And guys, get your thoughts on this. Uh, two, I think Miguel, De Miguel Delaney, first of all, said there is genuine interest from Manchester United about Kieran McKenna. And then my favourite, and the only one that I would actually start thinking, uh, other than Ten Hag for the start of next season, uh, Mr. Julian Nagelsmann from Germany. Well, he's the German international coach, why I say Germany, but he's well known in German circles and has done very well at several clubs. Uh, Jay, your thoughts on both of them managers. If it goes wrong for Ten Hag and it's, look, it's not looking good, uh, any of them two, uh, any of them two actually fit the bill for you in what? this team and the state of this team needs right now okay Kieran McKenna uh, has done amazingly well since he left since he left us uh, we gave him a hard time um, when he back was to back promotions um, possibly mate yeah he's done amazingly well however he's got to do it with a premiership side before we, we go near him um, I think for, for McKenna it, it'd be too much too soon should he achieve back to back promotions comes into premiership and takes on a mid-level, mid-table mid team and improves them. Then in two, two, three years time, yes, sir, look at McKenna. But right now, for me, Adam, I don't know about people in live chat, it's too early for McKenna. It could be a case of a Solskjaer 2.0. Got the job too early, got it on a motion, and we all know how it ended up. Now, Nagazeman, um, different character. Uh, very, very, very flashy in his approach. We all, we all remember that infamous blazer that he wore against us in the, in the Europa League a few seasons ago. Um, it's a quite impressive blazer. So if he's going to bring uh, that collection of blazers to press conference, it's something to talk about his fashion sense. But we're talking here to talk about football. He ticks boxes. Um, is he a box office manager? No. Is he a manager that's going to come in and think, Marcus Rashford, yeah, what have you won, mate? I think he's that kind of manager. You remember when um the when Don when Don Rivy left Leeds year, all years ago, Brian Clough came in, young manager, didn't give a toss 
what um, the, the Leeds lads had won. Didn't care. Came in with this big ego. And okay, we know, we know that, that one tits up. But Nagelsmann to United, another, I think he's Lewis Cannon. I don't think he's going to come in and work under the restrictions that that Brisford and Radcliffe want, would, would impose on a manager. Great on paper, but I could see in the games when come in, it'd be good for a year, and it, it'll go tits up after that. I just, Adam, for me, I can't see it. I'd like a manager with a bit more experience and not as um, egotistical. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's it's good because we both disagree. Uh, we kind of disagree on that. You, I understand your point on Nagelsmann. Uh, what I like is in terms of the structure that you mentioned there. This is a man that works with Ralph Ranick, who is the structure king, and his recommendation is Nagelsmann, according to uh, all sources. Anyway, in terms of a Manchester United manager, what I like is, and I've said this before, and I'm sorry if I'm saying it against people, but just if you are new and you are watching my. Big thing on Nagelsmann is he has won the under 19s championship in Germany with Hoffenheim. He has won the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich. He has developed a squad in a transition which has been RB Leipzig and the forthcoming of that that franchise, you could say. Uh, he has been part of that. He has worked with the structure, like I said, and has now got the experience of international level. Has also worked with big ego players and board members at Bayern Munich and you don't get any bigger egos than what are there at Bayern Munich right now so for me I just think he's a man on a mission I thought he was wrongly dismissed uh, according to everything that went on uh, I agreed with it I watched a lot of European football and a lot of European shows regarding this because I did like Nagelsmann when he was at RB Leipzig and I thought you know what he's gone by and that's it bye bye no one's ever going to see him again I could see him being the long term success manager and a lot has gone wrong. And I think a l what happens is, I feel, Jay, is that managers get all of this treatment. They get the experience of what is right and what is wrong and how football works at the young age, like Nagelsmann is. He's not like old. And he's got a massive future, I think. And then they come back stronger. I look at the likes of what Michael Silver at Fulham has learned and come back to in the Premier League. You just, for me, I think you need that new look. You need someone who... I feel is willing to be a different type of manager, be that coach, that head coach type of figure that I don't think Ten Hag is willing to do. I think Ten Hag wants power, personally, and I don't think he's going to get it under Ineos. I think Nagelsmann can work with it. I do. Because I don't think Ineos are that sort of structure which is just going to completely blank out a manager and just say no. I think there's more to him. Uh, so I, that's my point on him, uh, and that's why I do. Uh, <clears throat> love that Adam genuinely delighted Jay's disagreeing with him says Louise <laughs> I'm not absolutely delighted I just like good I just like good opinions that's what it's all about on this show uh, I've got a few questions for you in the chat actually Jay I'm just going to run through a few of these uh, if Jay was Manchester United manager who uh, would he drop Marcus Rashford or would he play him against Chelsea actually we'll come to that in a minute because we're going to get into the Chelsea game uh, I had another one there for you Jay, I'm just going to find it again now. Uh, Jay, but uh, lots of teams looking for managers, but not many around. Uh, would you bring back Jose? That's from Mick uh, Rube. I'm sure you know him from socials, Jay, but Jose Mourinho is free. What are you saying, Jay? <laughs> See, I can't... Uh, uh, Mick, uh, thanks, thanks for your question, mate. Um, I can't answer this question not be biased because... Adam, you know that I'm very biased towards Jose, and I, I firmly and I stick to my guns in this. That I, I felt he was sacked too early. Mm. He was sacked because Woodward backed uh, an underperforming uh, French player who only mentioned his name over him. So I'm very biased towards Jose. Right? I'm very, very biased. But even with Jose, there is inherent problems. Jose likes to buy his own players. Jose likes to be at the forefront of the club and be the voice and face of the club. I, I don't think Jose could work under the new structure that Nias want to impose as much as I love Jose. That's my answer. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I do. I'm, with, I'm in that boat as well, Jay, with Jose on that side of things. Uh, I think he's just had his day. I love the charismatic character that he is. I love that stern. I love just his antics. Like, he knows how to... He knows how to command everyone sits down when Jose stands up like they know 
that something's about to happen. And I love that about him, but I think his day has gone in terms of modern football and bringing something new. Uh, we are just about to hit the 200 like mark, guys. Absolutely killing it tonight. I love you all. Fantastic performance from you guys. Uh, Henry Longus says, Adam and Jay, Ten Hag has lost all respect with all other players after Belfast incident, putting Rashford straight back into their team. They are not listening to him anymore. Your opinions, guys. I mean, Jay, on that one, I think it goes back to what we said earlier on, mate, regarding uh, what's happened this season. Different rules for one, different rules for another. Uh, that's where I'm at with it. You, Jay? Um, so, Belfast Bebe, the worst thing that happened to him was scored that bloody goal when he came back. Mm. That was the worst thing that happened because, of, hey, I got, I got my goal. It was like, forget my teammates. I got my goal. You know, I've been punished. I scored my goal. I don't care. He needed to come back in and actually be humble for a couple of weeks. But no, that goal fed his ego. And a lot of the, and I I, I always refer to him, Adam, as you know, certain members of our fan base are sheep with tension span of a goldfish. When he scored that goal, it was literally his millions of fans on, on social media jumping on, oh, Marcus, now you've set everyone down, you've set on the fan base. That's not what he needed. He needed to show a bit of humility mm-hmm. and in, 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 in engender himself back to his teammates and to the fan base, and he hasn't. Now, he got that worldly um, who used to go as well, and, and credit you, it was a worldly, but he needed to show some humility, and that hasn't happened. So the first question there was, what would I do with manager? And that's, for me, that's rhetorical. I dropped Rash for the rest of the season. That's my message. I drop him in the rest of the season. You're on the bench. I don't want to see you. Go up, go up to Belfast, do your shots of tequila, meet the ladies, do whatever you're doing, not playing for me anymore, mate. That's what I would do, plain and simple. And we're, we're fighting for Europa League football. We can fight for Europa League football and be Coventry without Marcus Rashford. Mm. Jay said it there. That's straight to it. I mean, Jay, a few people have been asking about uh, the team and what you would do. Obviously, I think you've answered one of the questions there and your opinion on Marcus Rashford. But I've been going in on what my team is. Uh, I'll give you your chance now, Jay. And everyone else in the chat, this is your opportunity to get involved in this as well. I did see you up earlier on in the show uh, today uh, around lunchtime regarding who you would bring in, how you would change things up in the team. Uh, starting with the front three, we might as well see us over there, Jay. Uh, who are you playing in that? Because we know Tenag's not going to change shape. I'll try anything different, uh, heaven forbid. So that front three for you, who are you picking, Jay? Now we know Ahmad is back as well, so he's available. He just took the words out of my mouth. Ahmed. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Ahmed, Ahmed, it, 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 it isn't, that's, it's, um, it's a no-brainer. Um, that 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 player has not got a fair rub of the green by Ten Hag or or or, or car out alone, back alone, has never got enough, enough game time. Remember, he burst the scene, he got that goal against was Atlanta in Europa League a couple of years back. AC Milan. And he never, yeah, AC Milan. Yeah, thanks for to me. He never got a fair run in the team. So you, you've you've got you've got um the charity enthusiast Belfast Bebe, drop his ass, play Ahmed, no brainer. Yep. Uh, rest of them. Well, Ganacho. Um, he's been Ganacho, Highland, and Ahmad. Uh, yeah, just, that's, just my, that's, what, that's my front three. Just that's wanted to throw three. out there. Uh, would you not be tempted to uh, bring Mount into the the front line at all, or play Antone for his work rate? No, does them no, three. I'm, no, I, I'm dropping Runo and playing and playing Mount. Um, okay, take you into midfield. Base. Carry the on with midfield, Jay, because you're going down the same the, road I was, yeah, actually. The, the fan base have been asking since Mount was signed, what if you sign him? What if you give him number seven jersey? He's not going to uh, displace Bruno. Now, a phrase that you used a couple of years ago, and it's, it's one of your phrases that you've coined, and I love it, I use it myself a lot. Does he have the big balls make the big calls? Well, Eric, show some big balls, drop your, your so-called captain, and play your £50 million pound number seven in that spot tomorrow night against his old team. If yeah. ever a man had a point to prove, it's against his old club. That's okay? it. Okay, And he scored last week, which should have been the winner. So play him. Like, for, I think for the first time in his career, Mount Ashley has some confidence. Mm. That, no, him. he does. Start him tomorrow night. It's a no-brainer. He does. Uh, does the defence take care of itself for you, Jay? Uh, let's, let's, let's say, for instance, the three people that... 
uh, Tenag said in his press conference today we're back in training where Harry Maguire, Johnny Evans and Rafael Varane was also brought off in the game against uh, Brentford. But all three of them have trained. So we have got options there. We've got four fit centre-backs if you include Willie Camberwella. Uh, who is your centre-back partnerships? And I'm guessing the full-backs take care of themselves, but tell me which side, please, Jay. Yeah, well, we we, we, we saw what happened against Brentford when he played um, Armand Massac out of position. So I hope he's learned from his lesson. <laughs> he plays him, he plays him on, on his right side t- on, tomorrow night. Centre-backs, um, an embarrassment of riches. Do you play 37-year-old back from minute Johnny Evans against... Um, Chelsea, or do you play Harry Helium Head Balloon against Chelsea? It's Harry a 50 50 coin, balloon. <laughs> it's a 50 50 coin, mate. Literally, it's a 50 50 toss a coin. Uh, to me, um, and again, I'm answering this question because I don't, I don't know the fitness level of each player. He's got to play one of them. If I'm choosing, I'm biased. I pick Evans. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, actually. Uh, another one that I picked was Casemiro for McTominay from that starting lineup. I'm taking it you're the same on that one. Yeah, we we, we don't disagree on much, Adam, and uh, we definitely won't agree on Casemiro over Scott McSide. Was we're never disagreeing that mate. Yeah, uh, MDR Samurai with a super chat. Cheers, but uh, Jose has won at every level. Eric Ten Hag hasn't won anything close. Uh, and is completely delusional managing this squad. Tired of Ten Hag's United. You're not the only one, MDR, really. Uh, I think, like, every time Ten Hag has a press conference, everyone loses faith. They really do. Uh, Evans, Varane, wan Zaka and Dallo for Frank Davison. Uh, Winston, uh, Varane is training. I think he's talking to Louise, sorry. Uh, if he was fit or not, uh, he is. Ten Hag sacks uh, is simple. This sixth place, remember that West Ham's manager, I don't remember the name, sorry. I I end up uh, seventh chosen by Ferguson. Uh, George, yeah, it was David Moyes, mate. It was. Uh, so, yeah, I know where you're going with that one as well. Uh, Louise says, reason I like Anthony for... Uh, for the left is first uh, whoever is there will make a sh- uh, will make a shift and Anthony gets back and defends and has energy. Also, best things we've seen from him have been on the left hand side. Like uh, he's left footed, Louise, and I would love for Ten Hag to just mix it up a little bit and do play a player who is left footed on the left wing. Maybe it'd be nice, but he is infatuated by the inverted fullback and inverted wingers. Oh, unfortunately for us, because I just don't think we've got the players that can play them. So uh, instead of actually changing the shape, changing the system, which good coaches should do, Ten Hag moans about injuries and excuses come out, which doesn't help his cause. And I think that's why a lot of fans are, are on his back also. Uh, guys, uh, please give the video a like. We're nearly at the 250 mark. Let's see if we can get there. Don't forget, again, down, download our Sofa Score app. Description is in, uh, sorry, the link is in the description below. Uh, click on that top link or scan the QR code in the bottom right corner of your screen. You're going to need it tomorrow. If you are a member, remember tomorrow it is the T4 Watch Along with me on that platform. Uh, make sure you go and take a look at the video in the members only section. If you are lit up in green and a member, go and look at it and do join us tomorrow. It is worth it again. More, more and more things coming on that show, including again tomorrow, your chance to have your say and be part of the show. So that is there as well. Make sure you're there. Quarter to eight, we kick off, but you can be in anytime you want, guys. Just go and click on the link. I'll put a post out later on the community for you guys, uh, just so you also know what is going on there. But... uh, Jake, it's that time where we need to get into uh, a bit of a look ahead to the uh, actual score tomorrow and what we're actually thinking. Uh, tell me what you expect these players to react like. Because Anana came out after the game and says, we're used to this now, having to bounce back. I think that was like the worst thing I heard out of that game. I didn't want to hear that. Like They're expecting this to happen all the time. They're used to it now. It's poor. But for you, what needs to happen tomorrow, Jake? Uh, and what score are you going with? So uh, Onana now has bought into the uh, the bounce back ability um, phrase that's mm. been around for the last ten years. Geez, he's English improved, hasn't it? Well, that's <laughs> like a virus, that bounce back ability thing. Isn't Christ it? Almighty! But 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 he's he's wording in that it, it's almost like he's resigned to the fact 
that okay this is us we, we're we actually probably shite this is just what we expect mm. there's no there's no fighting talk there's no conviction in in those words that's 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 what, that's, that's what i take from that i know and then anana then to his credit adam we, we've been flagged him off many times on shows he's actually improved he's been good um, mate. I, I agree la, la, against brentford we've been four or five and a half time buzz for him so i have given credit in that but um obviously onana is talking from what he sees every day in training what he sees in the dressing room he sees that the sad four long faces every day like i imagine they're sad and forlorn because if i was losing on performing in my job or in my sport i'd i'd be i'd be um, i'd be pretty well depressed so obviously onana has been sucked down to let their level as well that's that's pretty sad but uh, um i digress you want to score for me i've got on a tangent now my apologies score okay heart says united win 2-1 Head says we lose two 0 Yeah, uh, I think like you said, it's like, I expect goals in this game. Uh, I'm going to go for a score draw. I think a two-two, three-three bonanza, stressful night. Uh, no team in any control, uh, and yeah, it's it's just one of them games. I think. Uh, just quickly, Michael. No, it doesn't cost anything, mate. It's free. Just follow the link in the description on the members video that I posted out last night, mate. I'll put a. Uh, community post out as well uh, but we have a couple of super chats in the chat here right now boot Eric the egghead out the bum says alien Tenno. thanks for that alien and Akash with another one says this cycle needs breaking give Eric Ten Hag another season oh two different super chats at the other ends of the spectrums there you would say uh, and going back to what I was saying in regard in the game tomorrow I just think it's one of them I think we're going to get one of them Liverpool games. I had two teams who I don't think have got a style of football. But when given the opportunity, we'll like to come to the party. It's like United can attack. United can score goals. Uh, and when someone as open as Chelsea, not comes to town, obviously, because we're travelling to them, but I think it all comes down to bottle. Like We will really see how brave United are tomorrow. If we want to sit back and try and defend, I think we lose. And Chelsea sneak the win. But I think United could nick it. But I'm going for a high-scoring draw. Uh, I do believe there's goals for both teams in this. I'm not confident with any defences. I think Chelsea's is shocking. I really do. Uh, I think United with the mixed match and another partnership uh, at the back, uh, another combination in the back four. I think it's just there's nothing cohesive and we're bound to concede goals. Hopefully we can score more than the opposition and that's how I will probably go into that game. Just anything right now, just to give me any encouragement. I've given up on... I was getting anywhere in the league in terms of Champions League, so just give me something to cheer within the games. And that's all I'm looking at, really. Uh, into the chat, Compass Smith. Most of these players will stay if the manager gets the boot. Another year in the doldrums incoming. Uh, on that, Jay, I quickly want to ask you, because you were going in on like what Sir David Brailsford was talking about and then one-on-ones. Do you feel if Ten Hag goes, we're going to get the same old players get another chance? Or do you think Ineos are going to be different? Ineos are playing a very dangerous PR game here. Um, they, they've rolled into town with this um, positivity factor at, of, of, of 10. And I've said in previous shows to deflect from the negativity of the Glazers. So if they sack Ten Hag, and we say hypothetically Ten Hag is sacked, and they keep the same court of players, and let's put a sprinkle of dust on the top, you know what's going to happen, Adam. We get that um, that buoyancy at the start of the season. And then the current court of weak-minded players will ultimately bring the new signings down to their level. And the next November, December, Adam, you and I are sitting here having the same conversation. So on that, Ineos have to set an example and cull the weak-minded players. Mm -hmm. And... To, to get rid of the aforementioned Marcus Rashford, the effect that has that has on, on financial fair play, homegrown costs nothing. Straight away, we can spend upwards then of what two fifty plus if we get rid of Rashford. Yeah. So financially as well, it's a no brainer. But then, can we sell him to say hypothetically um, PSG, and will they pay his extortionate wages? Mm. That's another question. So well. If anyone's going to pay extortionate wages uh, like United do, it's PSG, especially what Mbappe got out of that club anyway. But 
Uh, yep, yeah, uh, that is it for tonight, guys. Uh, absolutely massive show. Cheers for everyone for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video earlier on. I was out filming for uh, Emirates uh, for the FA Cup and the build-up to the FA Cup uh, semi-final and FA Cup final today. Uh, I can't tell you much about it, but the actual video, I will obviously put a link in for everyone once it comes up on their channels. You will enjoy it. It was quite fun and something totally different. So uh, do stay tuned uh, for that one. Uh, we do have another member in the house, uh, and that is Stephanie. Stephanie, I didn't even know because you were a mod that you wasn't a member. But Stephanie, I fully expect you to be with us tomorrow on TIFO watching this game. Thank you, Fred. Again, your second donation of the night. Uh, but guys, that is it. I expect to see you all tomorrow. I will keep you posted uh, as to what the content is tomorrow. With it being a match day and a late kickoff again, it may be a little bit different. But just stay tuned to everything that's going on. Uh, and uh, I will keep you all posted. And if you are a member, I will send you that community post later on as well uh, with information on watching the game tomorrow with us on TIFO. Uh, absolutely loved it. Jay, absolute pleasure having you on. Please tell the people your TikTok and Twitter slash X accounts so they can watch your morning coffees. I love seeing that morning <laughs> coffee pop up on my notifications every day, mate. Well, surprise, surprise. Um, my Twitter slash X is JD Mourinho. Um, there's almost some comments there to let you peruse and think about. Uh, I don't do much TikTok. Usually it's a post-match rant before I go on my Adam. <laughs> that's uh, that's I'm um, going TikTok at Real J Daily. Nice one. Uh, and guys, yeah, thanks again. Love it. Give us a few more likes. We're nearly at the 250 mark, guys. Welcome, new members. Thank you for the super chats, as always. Everyone like the video on the way out, as you always do. And we will see you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening, people. And up the Reds. Actually, go and watch Aston Villa maybe beat City. Or do we want Villa to beat City? Yeah, we do, don't we? Because I don't think Champions League is still in our reckoning, even if Villa get beat by City. I'll leave with that one, guys. Have a good one.